I just want to ask you one before we go back to our listeners' observations and questions, and that is, given last year's great win in the finals, should they drop Cox for this, this game? Well, it's interesting you say that because Leroy Jones has just asked us exactly the same question. I was surprised he was dropped. Um, yeah. You know, I, I thought uh, clearly I missed something. I mean, okay, he was ordinary against GWS. He had a few mates, but I would have thought when they looked better, you know, say when they beat Carlton, um, even first game of the season against the Bulldogs, I thought he was okay. Uh, he stayed in the side for longer periods, performing at a lesser level than he had this season, I think. And he has my gut feel anyway. Look, I haven't checked the stats, so I could look like an idiot saying this, but my gut feel is that he's gone okay against West Coast. I mean, he certainly did in the elimination final, and he certainly did in the third quarter of the grand final in 2018. So given their paucity of genuine forward targets, um, it, it was a, it seemed strange to me, almost like, and it, you know, look, you want to tread lightly making accusations like this, but it just almost looked to me like Bucks and Co sort of starting to feel the pressure a bit and saying, oh, you know, the public's baying for blood, you know, we need a big name to go out. Cox was the sacrificial lamb, and I think they might look back at that game tonight. You know, the most amazing stat from tonight's game, given the dominance of West Coast is the inside 50 count, which Collingwood won by eight, 42 to 50. So firstly, West Coast have had only 42 forward entries and managed 20 scores from that. So going at nearly 50% for scores, that's a that's a big ratio. And the Pies have had 50, um, eight more and managed 7-7. Seven, seven. So, you know, their lack of quick ball movement and their lack of decent forward targets just really was the difference for me. Just on Cox, given, obviously, at match committee, they decided that they were going to play Darcy more forward. Very strange side to do that against. We know that West Coast Eagles have got a three-pronged big man forward line. And, yes, Howe got injured, but he's not necessarily the size to play on one of them anyhow. So we saw Braden Maynard really put up a very difficult contract in having to play on Darling for part of the game. Mark Keane spent time on Oscar Allen and obviously in his second game, the Irishman was beaten on more than one occasion. Ruffhead did pretty well on Kennedy. It meant that Darcy Moore had to stay forward. I'm just surprised, mm. especially given the intercept marking ability of the West Coast forward line, uh, West Coast back line. One thing about Cox, if you do put it on his head, I don't care how good McGovern and Barras are at intercept marking, that's going to become tough to do. And last week's failure against GWS, you didn't have to be Nostradamus to predict that Cox was going to struggle after a fair bit of rain in Melbourne and a, a pretty greasy evening at the MCG. I, I just thought it was the wrong way to drop him. And I, I agree. And it's, it's just about covering all bases, isn't it? I mean, how many times did you see the ball tonight go high and long into the Collingwood, you know, into the teeth the goal? And Barras and McGovern were able to launch a dual assault yep. on whichever Collingwood key forward was under the ball. And 